guests, and I'm so glad that you've set aside some time today to join us. Um, please let us know where you're from in the chat, and uh, let me show you what we're going to be making. Um, we are going to be making this, um, thanks Jen, appreciate that. <laughs> we're going to be making this picture frame. Um, it is a wooden frame that I've painted the back so it looks nice. Uh, on the front, we've got some Sculpey 3 uh, hexagon shaped tiles. And then we also are featuring um, these little cute mandalas made from gold liquid Sculpey. And we're e even using the gold liquid Sculpey as our grout uh, between the tiles and also as an adhesive to hold the tiles to the wooden frame. So if you're ready, um, we'll get started. We'll um, turn our um, gaze toward our workstation here and I'll show you what, what we're doing. So first off, I want you to know that this is a wooden frame. Um, I got this at Michael's. It's um, the Art Minds brand and it's wood. Wood works really, really well with oven baked polymer and also with liquid Sculpey. Um, it, this frame is approximately um, eight inches square. And so all the dimensions I'm doing today work really well with this size frame. Um, it's got a little um, hole right here and it, you get this little dowel rod. When you take the, the, co the covering off, you need to save that little dowel rod in a safe spot. So you'll wanna open your frame, take the dowel rod out, take that little um, picture out. The dowel rod is what helps you um, balance your frame later. So it, for example, in my done frame, you want to be able to put that dowel rod in there so that you can prop your your frame up for standing so don't lose that um, after you've opened your frame we want to prep it beforehand so um, this is a good time to check it for any rough edges you could sand the edges with sandpaper um, also i have applied a thin layer of paint to my frame and I'm doing that before I put the clay on because it's a lot easier to do it beforehand. So this is a Craftsmart gold metallic paint. I used it because that's what I had, but for this project, obviously black or white or turquoise would look good too. So you're gonna wanna paint the whole back and then on the front where we're gonna put the clay, you wanna just make sure that you paint the edges both outside and inside edge. And then I just wrap my gold paint around the edges just a little bit. So that way, if there's any, um, you know, spots where I'm not perfect with my oven baked polymer or I'm not perfect with my gold, you just can't tell. Um, the gold um, paint edge just goes seamlessly um, right with all my clay colors. So, and I think it would look nice with black or white or turquoise too. So that's what you want to do to um, make sure that your frame is ready. Now, before I move these items, let's just um, see what I, all I'm using. I'm going to use black Sculpey 3. Um, this is teal pearl Sculpey 3 and white Sculpey 3. And I'm also using um, gold liquid Sculpey in the mandala mold. So first, what I want to do is just apply some of this gold liquid Sculpey that we're going to have for the grout to the frame. And first, we want to stir it up real well with one of our stirring tools. This is just a little knife tool from the clay tool starter set. And I'm stir, I stir that just quickly and then I'm getting as much of that product back in the bottle as I possibly can because I like to, to save it and be frugal with it and then I'm cleaning up my tools with either a baby wipe or a paper towel. All right, I'm setting that aside. I'm gonna put the cap back on this cap is adjustable once it's all the way on the bottle. So you can open it a little bit for fine lines or you can open it wide open like I'm gonna do now um, to put on my wooden frame. So I'm squirting um, a bead of the gold liquid Sculpey directly on my frame. And I always do this first because the liquid Sculpey is gonna actually want to kind of settle into the grain of the wood. So now at this point, you can either spread it with your fingers or with a knife tool or some sort of artist um, scraper and just get it all over. So this makes a really strong finished project because the liquid Sculpey is gonna wanna seep into the, the grain of the wood just a little bit. And then also, it's just the perfect adhesive for your Sculpey 3 hexagon-shaped tiles. 
And so when you are done, this is making just a super duper rigid and firm um, background for your oven baked polymer clay. You can do the same project with Sculpey Souffle or Sculpey Primo. Um, any of your favorite um, oven baked clays will work and they would work in just the same way. So you can just tailor it to your own color scheme and your own um, way that you like to work. Okay, now that I have that um, spread all over, I'm just gonna set this aside because I like for the, the liquid sculpey to have even just a few minutes to seep into the, the wood grain and that makes it um, just a stronger bond. So just cleaning off my tools. And next what we wanna do is prepare our mandalas. So these gold highlights, these these cool little um, sprinkles that are on top of the Sculpey 3 hexagons, those are actually made with gold liquid Sculpey in our mandala mold. So let me show you how to do that. The mandala mold comes with a silicone um, bakeable mold that goes right in the oven, and you also get a squeegee with it. So what I wanna do is just open up my um, gold liquid Sculpey again. Now I've already stirred it, so I'm good to go. And I'm just gonna squirt some in the center of each shape. Now, even if I, I'm gonna need all of these shapes for my frame, but even if I didn't need all the shapes, a lot of times what I do in my studio is I fill, fill the whole mold anyway. And then I just set the extra mandalas aside because I never know when I might want them to add um, like a little hint of sparkle or, or delicate design to another project. So all I'm saying is that I would just fill the whole mold anyway because it takes such a little bit of liquid and then I have, I set aside whatever extra pieces that I have left over. Okay, once that's full, then I want to open my uh, gold liquid Sculpey back up and I'm gonna squeegee that off with the, per, the squeegee that's provided in the kit. I just hold it at kind of like close to a 45 and I squeegee that off. Then I go right back to the bottle with my excess liquid. Squeegee it again. So you can see I put way too much, but that's okay. Squeegee it again and get as much of that back in the bottle as I possibly can. All right, now I can set, oh, I'm gonna do one more time. So you wanna clean that as best as you can with the squeegee. The mandala design has lots and lots of little open cells and you want those to remain open so that um, after they're baked, they look real lacy and delicate. Now I'm just cleaning my tools with a baby wipe or with paper towels, works well, clean my hands. Now I wanna show you a tip for making really perfect um, mandalas, but you can also do this with any, um, any silicone mold that you use. This is a good tip. So I have a paper towel here all folded into a thick pad, and that's just one tear off of a paper towel roll, just one sheet. And right along this thick edge, I'm going to douse some um, alcohol. This is 91% um, isopropyl alcohol, and it works really well for cleaning um, oven baked clays. Now I'm just going to use it like a squeegee and go back over this. And so Amy, what is this doing? So this is actually really cleaning the windows really well. It's cleaning out all those little detail spots that we maybe didn't get with the squeegee. And you just do that real quick. And you can see how much gold I have there on my paper towel. And here's a, a spot right here where I've missed some. So that's how the, the mold should look before you go into the oven. You want it to be, you know, at least that clean right there. You don't want to dig the liquid back out of the mold, but you want to go over it so that it's really, really clean. And when you bake those, um, they'll be super lacy and delicate. And I'll show you what that looks like in a couple minutes. So for now, this would need to go in the oven. And I designed this frame so that we can make all these special little um, added details with only one full use of the mandala mold. So 
Um, this goes in the oven at 275 for at least 15 minutes. Um, even up to 30 minutes is fine. I have a tendency to put these things in the oven and, and forget about them, and that's fine. <laughs> but at uh, 275 for at least 15 minutes to make them nice and strong. So that is going in the oven right now. Okay, next, let's prepare our Sculpey 3 um, to put it on the frame. First thing I did was I made this gray color. Um, I made the gray color out of black and white. Um, these are about one eighth of an inch thick and it's one, so Sculpey 3 is divided into four sections. I'll just open this super quick so you can see. So Sculpey 3 is divided into four pieces. And so to make this beautiful gray color, I used one and a half of the black and I also used one and a half of the white. So let me pull this over so you can see it really well. So one and a half of these little bars of black and one and a half bars of white. And that's how I got this beautiful gray color, okay? So first what I did was I um, pressed all my colors. So now I have four colors instead of three. I've got gray, white, black, and this teal pearl, which I love this color. It's got a little bit of a metallic fleck to it, little sheen. And what I did was I rolled these out into a sheet of clay. Now, don't panic. I'm going to show you exactly how I did that in a second. I just want to give you an overview first. Um, I rolled these out into a 1 8 uh, inch thick sheet of clay, each one. And then I used my large mosaic hexagon cutter and I cut out at least one sheet of each of them. There's 10 cutters in this one stencil or this one cutter, mosaic cutter. And so I made sure that I got um, at least 10 of each color cut out. Now I wanna just take an aside here and show you that with the hexagon cutters, you actually get two sizes. You get a small and a large and they work beautifully together for layering and for different projects. Um, but for this frame project, I only used the big ones. So that's what you see here. Okay, next I want to make a marbled color that looks um, like this. And to achieve these marbled areas, um, what I did was I used all my scrap clay. So from the gray, I had that much left over. From the white, I had this much clay. From the black, I had this much clay left over. And from the teal pearl, I had that much clay. So now I'm going to wad all these together and make a beautiful marbling and show you exactly how I cut all those pieces out. Okay, first you want to start by making a little rope of each of your colors. So I'm going to start with the white and I'm just um, rolling that, hand rolling it into a little rope. And next I'll do the gray. I'm just making sure it's really um, soft and smooth. So the colors are going to play well together. So Amy, from each bar, you only use, how much of each bar did you use? I make? used everything. Okay. So I mixed one and a half blacks. That's a great question. I mixed one and a half blacks with one and a half white to make the gray. But then I used all the remaining black and all the remaining white and the whole bar of teal. Okay. And I sheeted those out to one eighth inch thick. And then I cut out as many of these as I could. Okay? Yep. So did I answer that? Yes, you did. Okay, that was a great question. I appreciate that question a lot. <laughs> okay, next I have, so I have my white and my gray in rods ready to go. And next I'm gonna use what's left of my turquoise and I'm gonna roll it into a coordinating log. But there's way more of it left, so I'm actually gonna not use all of this. I just wanna get them kind of like, in the same realm of length. And I'm also not gonna use all my black because I don't want my black to overpower my marbling. So I'm gonna roll this into a rod and then I'm gonna decide how much of it I wanna use. So Sculpey 3 is really soft and it's a really good beginning um, brand of clay for um, children to get started, for people with maybe less hand strength to get started. It's really easy to work with tools. You don't have to have uh, machines, pasta machines or anything like that. Sculpey 3 is just a really great way to start in the realm of um, oven baked clays. Now what I'm going to do is roll my black down smaller because I, I really don't want the black to overpower my blend. 
So I'm just going to use like, I'd say this rope of black is only about half as big as um, the other colors and I'll just tear that off. But you can see how easy this is manipulating just by hand. Now I'm going to roll this to make it smooth on the edges and I'm going to twist it. And this creates some really beautiful stripes. Okay, now once I've got some good stripes going and my rope is really nice and smooth, I'm going to bend it in half like that. And then I'm going to bend it in half again. So if anyone watched our earring tutorial last week, um, this is the same method I used to make that marbled um, set of earrings that we did last week. Now I'm twisting again. Now the reason you want to fold and fold again is because we're trying to multiply how much um, of those little bitty stripes we're getting and how much um, like we're even blending partially in this marbling technique. So I folded in half and in half again. Now you get to be the judge of how much you want this marbled. <laughs> okay, I think you get the idea. But the further you go and the more often you fold it and fold it again, the more and more and more tiny, tiny stripes you're going to get and then the more and more and more marbling you're going to get. So right now I'm just trying to get us to a point where you can see that beautiful marbling and um, see what I do with it next. Hey Amy. Yes. For beginners, mm -hmm. do you recommend Sculpey 3 or Primo to make beads? Oh, for bead making, like especially if they are um, very, like if they're round compact beads or any shape that's very compact, you could start with Sculpey 3 or with Primo. Um, Primo is a little bit higher quality clay and it's very much stronger after it's baked. Um, but for a good starting place, if you want to get started with a little bit less expensive clay, the Sculpey 3 would be fine. Now, if you want to look at my necklace for a second, Here's what I wouldn't do. These are really flat. Um, these beads, these are not even like beads. These are like almost like pendant pieces. These are very thin. So if you're going to make something like that, you want to really stick with souffle or primo because they are super duper strong and um, they're even slightly flexible. So if you're going to, it depends on the shape of your bead. If you're making really compact beads, then Sculpey 3 is fine for that. If you're making really um, thin and flat pieces, then you need to move up to Primo and to Souffle. Okay, now I have this piece. I, I like this striping. It may not turn out exactly like what I have on the frame, but we're going to move on. And what I'm going to do is kind of patty this down with my hands to get it flattening out because um, let me set these here for a moment. All of our other hexagon pieces are about one eighth of an inch thick. And so I need to get this to about that same thickness. So that's why I patted it down with my fingers. And I'm just trying to make sure my hands are always where you can see them. And now I'm going to start rolling this thinner. And rolling it thinner will also like marble it more and multiply the marbling that we have going there. Now I see that you're kind of moving it Mm -hmm. positions. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about Well, that? I'm just really, I'm only doing that because I'm just trying to orient it to my body okay. position. You really don't have to do that, um, but um, I'm kind of working with my hands out in front of me, and so I'm orienting it to myself just to make sure I'm getting it of even thickness. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. So um, let me show you, too, one more technique. Like, I'm just going to cut a piece of that off, and I want to show you that Let's say you got this far and you didn't, and you really wished it was more muted and more marbled. What you could do at this point is you could fold this in half and then re roll it. And then that will blur your colors together even more. So you can see that this one is really starting, the colors are really starting to actually blend into each other, whereas these look more like stripes. And that's totally up to you. You can do it however you want for your finished piece. Um, don't be afraid to experiment and to try new things and, and just see um, how you like it. So um, anyway, that's a quick technique for even pushing it to marble more. And if you still didn't like how stripey this is, you could fold it in half. 
and do it again and you get even more blurring and more marbling. Okay, next I wanna show you how the cutter works. And this is the large hexagon cutter. And this is exactly the same way I made all of these pieces. I made the gray, the black, the teal pearl, and the white. I already did all those so that you didn't have to watch me um, do cookie cuttering right on this, on, this on this video or this class. <laughs> but this is what I did. So with the marbled sheet, now all I have to do is line up my cutter. And I'm just kind of lining it up like on this end. It doesn't matter how you want to do it. And I would like to have at least um, 10 of these. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out, even though it's not quite long enough. And then what I'll do is I'll just offload these onto a piece of deli paper. Let me show you that. These little deli squares, you could use wax paper, you could use um, foil, you could even use like scrap copy paper. And the point is just to get these out of my way so that my work surface is free for the next step. So I have each of my different colors loaded onto a little deli sheet. And that way, see how easy they slide around now and they're not just, you know, stuck in my way. So I need a couple more of those. So I think I'll go ahead and use our super marbled sheet. And you can use a scrap of this to pick up all your, all your leftover. <laughs> So I'm going to use a, this super marbly one and just cut out some more. Now for a project like this that has the really square edges, even your partial hexagons are going to come in handy because you can see right here that it took a partial hexagon to meet up to the edge. And over here, I even have some really tiny ones. So um, at this point, you might just um, think about preserving some of these pieces that have a little tip, nice clean tips. Um, that way you just have everything you need. Okay, so now again, I'm just going to pop these out with my finger and offload them onto this deli paper. Like this one isn't beautiful, but it might come in handy around with the edge of the frame. So I'll just save those for now. Okay, next I'm going to slide all of these out of my way so I can bring the frame back in. And be careful, this, the frame here is just a little bit gooey. Remember, this is where we put the, um, we've got gold liquid Sculpey on there. And it may not, it may look just the same to you, but I know that in a few minutes, I can see some dry areas where it has started to seep in. Um, the thicker you put the gold liquid Sculpey, um, the more it's going to, um, your tiles will slide around on there and that's something you might want to experiment with because you might want them to slide around a lot or you might want them to not slide just depends on how you like to work so all i'm doing now is lining up so oh yeah you can see me there okay Amy, if they don't yes. want to use liquid sculpey can they just use it on a normal wood frame um okay sculpey? if you don't want to use liquid sculpey as an adhesive um what, what works really well is to, to go ahead and prime your frame with a glossy acrylic paint. Um, the, the polymer clay, is solid polymer or Primo or Sculpey 3 or Souffle, they aren't going to really latch on to um, the wooden frame as well as um, the liquid does. So you're going to want to prime it with um, something tacky, like either um, that's a really good question. You want to prime it with something tacky like either um, a glossy acrylic paint or even a coating of um, dried white craft glue. That will also, um, excuse me, I'm trying to line this up so I can go really fast and see my sample. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can um, smear um, craft glue all over it and then allow that to dry and it makes a nice tack that your um, and bacon bond works as well bacon bond translucent liquid sculpey all of those work really well so if you already have one of those on hand um, you can certainly use that okay so the reason I'm leaving the gaps like I did is number one the gold liquid sculpey will show in between the gaps and also um, because um, it helps me fit my tiles to the frame. 
like for example, this space just perfectly accommodates two of those tiles. So I could totally adjust, um, you know, adjust that gap to make it fit the frame perfectly. And here I'm gonna adjust it to make two of these fit here really well. So there, I let that one hang off the edge and that's fine. And so you wanna just keep filling this up with tiles. So Jen, tell me how much time I have so that I know how. About 35 minutes. Oh, great. Okay, I'm just going to cover this whole thing with the tiles then. <laughs> Please uh, let me know your questions as you have them. Okay, right here, this piece has some air bubbles. So I'm just going to take the opportunity to pop those, I think. Yep, here's my needle tool. There's a couple air bubbles right here, so I'm just going to pop those. Okay, I need to really turn that so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Okay, like right here, I know that I'm going to need a half of a black. So I'm just going to put, just going to go ahead and cut one and snug it right up there. And I'll need a half of a gray on the other side. And actually, um, I'm not crazy. This really does have a pattern to it. <laughs> And I find that um, if you kind of commit yourself to a pattern, um, if you look at the whole frame, you would see the pattern probably better. But if you commit yourself to a pattern, then um, you won't go crazy uh, putting this all together. Now, someone was asking if you could bake the tiles first before putting them on the frame. You could. You could bake the tiles first, but um, you will never have this wonderful bond that we have here. I mean, this this bond of wood to liquid clay to um, Sculpey 3 is really good and really strong and really rigid. So uh, you would have a hard time achieving that. Also, um, I find that um, I, like to, I like to put the, the tiles on raw because um, it helps me get them really flat on there too. I sometimes have a little bit of um, trouble if I'm if I'm baking really thin pieces, um, they'll they'll have a tendency to want to bend um, in the cur cur curling <laughs> cooling process. They might want to bend a bit, and there's some tricks around that. But to avoid that altogether, um, I just like to put them right on the the piece that I'm designing it to, and let them bake right on there. How long does liquid Sculpey stay liquid until it bakes? Okay, so that is a great question because if you let this sit a long time, like if I let this set overnight and I came back to it, it would really have soaked into the frame enough that it would feel more like um, a dried craft glue, um, which will also work to bond it to the clay tiles. Um, so if liquid Sculpey is sitting on something real porous, it's going to want to um, soak into that. And you'll notice that even as little as overnight. So good, good question. Appreciate that. Here, I'm just going to put that one. And then I need part of a gray. You can see here where the the partial tiles would come in really handy at this point. I want to cut that one wrong. So let me come back to it. And then I need one of these for right in here. I'm trying to keep that gap really consistent hey, as I build these. Gaps. On that oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, let me just push that. Thank you for telling me. Yep. Trying to keep my gaps pretty consistent as I go. Need part of a white here. And now that I have that part of a white, I need part of a white up here. Just go back a little bit. And I need part of a marble over here. So you're always just going back and filling in. All right, let me just finish this up so I can show you how to trim the edges. Gray teal, white,
You know, um, I hope it's okay to say that we have a lot of projects like this online on Sculpey.com that you can um, always visit that and, and print them out. They're free projects that tell you how to use um, Liquid Sculpey as an adhesive, Liquid Sculpey as a grout. All that information is there for you to use and there's a lot of projects like this for good, nice home decor. Um, I think you can picture how beautiful something like this would be with your own color scheme. Yeah, someone even said they have a mirror frame that they want to do. Oh, like, yes. Something like this on. Yeah. So I don't know a lot about mirrors, but you would want to make sure the quality, if you can't get the mirror out, if you can get the mirror out of the frame, then you're good to go. Um, if you can't get the mirror out, you might want to, you know, try to figure out if that mirror is going to be okay in the oven because uh, for the Sculpey clay to set and to become permanent, it needs to bake in your home oven at 275, obviously, because it's oven baked clay. So here I'm just trying to keep my gaps all the same and go right up and even over the edge. And another marbled one. And then I've got like half a black one there on the edge. And then I've got part of a gray one over here. Okay, let's take an overview look of this. So here's how, where I am so far. So if you wanna be really, really consistent, what we would do is um, we would wanna probably put some little tips in this edge here. Let me show you how I did that. So I just took pieces like, like this, partial pieces, and I kind of eyeballed, tried to visualize how much of a tip I need in there, and I just kind of cut that off. And then I even picked it up with my blade like this. See how it's stuck on the side of my blade? And then I can just put that in position. I don't really know where it goes, but I'm just going to do that for now. And then you can take other pieces of these partials and just clip pieces off like that and fill in these edge gaps. So that's the way you would do that. And you would for sure want to go along and fill all those little gaps in. You would want to repeat that here on the inside just to make sure your pattern repeats really, really well. And if we have time in a little bit, I'll go back and do all that, but I wanna make sure you get all the steps of this project first. So at this point, let's pretend it is completely covered wall to wall, even maybe hanging off a bit. And so what I would do at this point is um, I, would, I would lay this face down just real lightly and I'm gonna lay it on a piece of paper. This is my Sculpey Work and Bake clay mat, it's silicone. And the clay really loves to stick to this, which in 90% of your cases, you want the clay to stick to it. But for this piece, I want to be able to pick this back up. So I'm just gently going to lay it on a piece of copy paper. And then I'm going to go back in here with a tool and just cut. You can see where these pieces are exposed. Just use the frame as a cutting edge and remove those. Even going around the corner here, I'll get my hands all the way. See, this one is a corner, and I'll just slide my tool right around the edge of the frame and get rid of that. Same thing over here. Cut those away from the edges. And you want to do this on the inside and on the outside. Let me see if I can find, look at all those edge pieces there. Those would be easier to cut, like with your straight blade. So I'll just do that here, pull all those. Now you've got a lot more of those little um, triangle shaped tips that you might need to fill in other places. But I designed this frame so that if you um, cut every color um, out one time with that hexagon cutter that you'll have enough pieces to do the whole frame. And it's a, like I said earlier, it's an eight by eight frame. Okay, I'm going to flip it back over. See, this way I can just use my piece of paper to help me flip it. And there it is again. And it's done very little um, damage to, you know, I'm just checking to make sure they're all lined up. 
Okay, now pretend with me again that the, this is completely covered, that we've got all our little gaps and all our little edges covered. And what I wanna do next is um, I'm going to take my mandala pieces that I made earlier, and I'm gonna work with those to add a little highlight to the top of the frame. And those have been baked. These have been baked, 275 in your home oven for at least 15 minutes. And now what we wanna do is just flex the mold and peel them out. And can you remind people how you made those with the liquid sculpting? Yep, so I had this mold and it was empty. And uh, what I did was I just, I made sure I stirred my liquid sculpey first. I stirred it in the bottle and this is gold liquid sculpey. And then I just opened the tip and I filled the mold, the center of the mold with some gold liquid sculpey. And then I used the squeegee that comes in the kit and I, well, I actually, I moved it around with my finger first. I burnished all the liquid in there with my fingertip and then I squeegeed it off with the included squeegee that comes with the mold and then I put it in the oven at 275 for at least 15 minutes. So these are completely cool and I'm peeling them back out. It's really good practice to use an oven thermometer um, with your, anytime you're baking oven baked clay because um, this is your design and your art and you if you're taking a lot of trouble to make something nice you want to make sure you finish it well and so time and temperature are totally important with any oven baked clays and the reason is because it's the the good timing and the good temperature that gets you the absolutely strongest product that you can that it was designed for um, one time I was in a situation where a lot of people were using the same oven and so some we weren't really regulating the temperature all that well we just assumed it was as hot as it was supposed to be but the oven had been turned off and so um, when I took my little mandalas out of the oven they just cracked and broke and that's because they didn't reach the high the high temperature they needed for the time okay now what I like to do when I use these mandalas is um, this is a situation where I'd like to have more mandalas than were made in that one mold. And you can see like right here, I've got partial mandalas spread around. So what I like to do is just take some really sharp scissors and cut these little babies apart. And that way I get more mileage out of them. The biggest ones are really easy to uh, envision how they would look cut because they there's a lot of real estate there <laughs> this big mandala is way bigger than we need for our design and but that doesn't stop me from using it i just like to cut it up and make more and more and more of it and then once i have it cut like this i'll even go back in and i'll cut these lobes apart and make it this big one i'll cut it into like um, I think six more pieces because it has, I think it has like 12 lobes on it. So I just use sharp scissors and cut these all up. But you can see um, this liquid Sculpey, this baked liquid Sculpey is so flexible and delicate and pretty. And earlier when I was talking about getting those little windows clear inside the mold, um, there's so much detail in here and so you want to squeegee that really well and then I came up with that tip of using a cotton pad um, on the back and you can just see how perfect um, let me put it on something darker you can just see how perfect those little windows are and all the detail is there and yet it's really quite strong and flexible so this medium size one I'll go ahead and cut it apart too and make it into more pieces Okay, and then I think I have this one, I cut it into fourths. Of course, this hexagon frame is just as pretty even without these. Um, you don't even need to put these over the top, but um, we're excited about all of our cool new products and we like to show you how to use them. So um, that's what we're doing here. So, okay, let's pretend again that this is completely covered <laughs> and totally finished. And if I have time, I will do that. I do see a little bobble right here. 
And this is a, I've smeared it from where I used my knife on the back. So I'm just gonna go in with my fingers and clean that up. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna orient this the same way my sample is over there. So I don't take up all your time trying to figure out what I did. But I just start adding the mandalas where I would like them and to make um, just a little bit more detail. So I'll try to keep, keep in the frame here. When I do these partial pieces, I like to line the cut edges up, um, you know, with, with the edges of the hexagon. So they kind of look like they're, like they're planned to How be there. How do they stay on? Okay, so great question. <laughs> Jen, did someone really ask that? No, or did I you did, I, did, you I did just, that? Didn't I'm you? just prompting. You're so questions. smart. Okay, so the reason they stay on is because I am using a slight amount of pressure to to push them on, but they um, they like liquid liquid clay likes solid clay, and it just wants to stick together. It's for lack of a better scientific reason, that's kind of how it works. They they have the same chemical components in them, and so they like each other, and they're attracted to each other. So you just use a little bit of fingertip pressure um, to make them stick. And then once they're baked, that bond is permanent. Um, you're not gonna get them back off unless you just try to, to break them off. So um, I've never had them come back you know, off anything I've made. And these tiny ones are so cute. Look at that. Look at that little guy, he's so cute. So as I'm going, I'm just making sure that I'm, I've got enough pressure to make it sure everything is stuck down. If, if it looks like any of my hexagons are, you know, not laying nice and flat, then I'll go ahead and flatten them out. This is the touchy-feely part. It's what gives it the finishing look and it's probably my favorite part. I just like to touch it and push on it and <laughs> Make sure it's all hooked together. And because that liquid clay is still kind of, um, you know, it's not cured yet, I do have a little time to play. And you can see that my tiles will still, they still slide around and they still are movable. They're not permanent yet. So good question, Jen. <laughs> Has anyone ever made a home decor project with oven baked polymer clay out there? Are you guys, maybe you could tell us in the chat if you're new to it or if you've made some things that you're happy with or. Is there a trick to avoid fingerprints? Um, well, in a, in a project like this, I'd say that's kind of a lost cause because I am using fingertip pressure. Um, oven bake, first you need to know that oven baked clay needs a little pressure to help all the parts connect. Um, and it, it actually wants to be encouraged to stick to its neighboring piece. Um, that's just kind of how it works. Now, if you have pieces um, that you can actually, you know, um, before they go in the oven, you can actually rub on them and touch them and, and handle them quite a bit more. Um, what you could do is, um, you know how I doused um, alcohol on the paper towel earlier when I used it for a squeegee and I got all that gold off my mandalas. You can douse paper towel or cotton swab with 91% um, alcohol and then you can use that to actually burnish, lightly burnish away fingerprints. What about wearing gloves? You can wear gloves. Certainly you can wear gloves. Um, gloves would take away fingerprints. Um, yeah, so there are some different things you can do. It just depends on, you know, how, what your method of working is and how you enjoy working. But I just like to touch it. So <laughs> you're going to have my fingerprints all over my work and everyone will know, oh, you can track me down by my fingerprints probably. So. They're all over the place, but I don't mind. So yeah, uh, you can burnish them, you can wipe them away with alcohol on a paper towel. You can also sand away fingerprints later, um, you know, if you want to. That's another method that you can do. All right, a couple more of these and, and this is gonna be 
at least all decorated and then we can talk about maybe filling in some of those gaps or answer more questions. We got 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is such a good class. You guys are just learning so quick. <laughs> all right, where should I put this one? Let's put it Let's put it right here, I guess. Okay, so now at this point, what I would do is I would go back and make sure all my little spaces are covered. And like up here in this rounded corner, I would wanna make sure that that um, matches the side of the frame. You wanna go back and double check that all your little gaps are even. Let's put some more of these um, little pointed pieces here so that we can make it look finished. Here's a black one, I'll cut a corner. Um, let me get on the screen so you can see what I'm doing. Not only my tips, but this. I'm gonna cut a little triangle tip off this black one and set it, I'm gonna pretend that it goes right there. Just to finish these off a bit. Here's another turquoise one, I'll cut the tip off of it. Put it right here. Fill in all your little gaps. So there we go. Now I only have the only area I have left is this inner section around the, the photo frame. So I'll just put some of these in here. Need another marbled one. Good way to use up those excess pieces. Put that there. And I'll do a gray one on the edge. Okay, so at the very end then what I would do is I would make sure all my cut edges are nice and smooth. Anywhere I've used a knife for the cutter, I like to make sure I will turn it and make sure all my edges are smooth. This is a little bulky right here. And this little gray corner needs to be trimmed right here. I'll just use the edge of my blade to get it started and then I can use my fingertips to make it actually match the shape of the edge of the frame. Hey Amy. Yes. Can you give some ideas for what people can do with like leftover scrap clay that Ooh, they have from yes. the Yes. So this is ready to go in the oven. This whole thing, wood, um, paint, liquid sculpey and all, this goes in the oven for 30 minutes, or to, actually this goes in the oven for 20 minutes at 275 because um, I use Sculpey 3 brand clay here, and so Sculpey 3 bakes for at 20 minutes, not 30. So that would go in the oven, and when it comes out, it would be completely um, rigid and strong, just like this one. And I also have a bonus frame I brought to show you what it looks like if you put it all together without those little gaps. So these pieces were snugged. These pieces were snugged completely together without gaps. And so you can't see the grout lines between it. But, and this, the marbling on this one is a lot bolder. So we didn't, that wasn't our sample. This was our, our finished sample. Okay, so like Jen was suggesting, um, what do you do with the scraps? So let me show you how much clay is left over from this project. So there's all my marbled pieces. Here's all my black, here's my gray. There is not a lot left over. Here's all the turquoise or the teal pearl. And there's this much white left. <laughs> so that is all the scrap we had right there. Let me get it all in the camera. What's missing, the black? Yep. Yep, okay. Okay, perfect. So that's how much clay we have left. That's, um, I'd say probably less than a bar. All right, so one of my favorite things to do um, with scrap clay is to, um, you can wad it up and make beads. And if you wanna go back and watch our Zoom um, tutorial from, we made earrings last week, right Jen? Yes. So you can just use this beautiful marbled um, bit to make some beads. 
And I, what I do is I just kind of roll a rope and then I want to cut that. Do you ever use a glaze on the frame, like when you're done baking? Yes, you if you want it shiny, you could always go back over it with um, Sculpey Gloss Glaze, um, and that will make it shiny if you want to. No glaze is needed. You don't need to glaze oven baked polymer glaze because they're waterproof and uh, actually quite strong. So you don't have to, you don't have to glaze them, but if you want to, you can just for the look. And then you can drill a hole with your needle tool. So last week on Zoom number two, we did a whole series of earrings and one of them was marble. So this would be a really great place to use up some scrap clay. And the thing about um, this style of scrap clay that's already striped is um, it makes beautiful, really, really pretty ropes and twists that are hard to achieve with unstriped clay. For example, if I roll this out and then twist it into a rope, I'm gonna get way, way, way more of those itty bitty stripes and detail, um, you know, than I would if I was intentionally trying to do this. Now let me show you another trick you can do with scrap stripey clay. So I'm gonna roll this out into a little sheet, kind of similar to how we did um, for our marbled hexagon pieces. So I'm just rolling it flat, that's all I'm doing. And then um, this is called Bargello paper technique. You just take a needle tool or something and drag through it. I'm not going all the way through, I'm just um, breaking the surface. And then if I roll over it again, you get this really pretty, um, it's almost like handmade paper. Let me show you this closer. My little stripes are so fine, it's hard to see. But um, you get this beautiful little wavy pattern that um, is hard to achieve intentionally, but it works really great with scrap. And then that can be formed over the outside of a bead or used to make a picture frame. Yeah. And what about if they wanted to use Primo and Sculpey 3, can you mix them? Yes, you can. You can mix, you can mix any of our brands of clay together to make your own, um, to make your own, you know, like feel and touch and strength and even color palette. You can mix um, Primo with Souffle and Primo with Sculpey 3 and and that way you get um, even, you can mix Primo with ultralight. And <laughs> that way you just get, um, you know, your own custom blends for strength or for color or for, you know, whatever you want to use it for. And how so, do you store your clay um, to use for later? Okay, so um, maybe, uh, Stacy, you wanna go to my face for a minute because my hands aren't really busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so the way I store clay in my studio is um, I have this little rolling cabinet. It's got four drawers. So let's say the bottom drawer is Sculpey 3 and the next drawer up is Primo. First, you want to make sure that if you're using plastic storage bins, that they work well with oven baked polymer because oven baked polymer has active ingredients in it that will react with plastics. So all you got to do is just put some oven raw oven baked polymer clay. Um, on the plastic that you want to use it with and let it sit overnight. If in the morning they are easy to pull apart, then that plastic is safe for you to use. Now on Sculpey's website, they publish the, the plastic numbers. Number I don't know. Number five. Number five. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes plastics have a little number engraved on them and you can, Jen's telling me that number five um, is the one that doesn't react with polymer. So back to my storage cabinet, I've, it's got like several drawers. The bottom drawer is all Sculpey 3. So when I have this, um, I have this left over, I'm gonna consolidate this into one little lump. And if I have more teal pearl in that drawer, I'm smashing it to that and I'm putting it in the drawer. And I'm just keeping it safe from dog hair and from dust and from dirt. Um, it's not gonna cure in there. Um, oven baked clays have to go in your oven at 275 to make them permanent. So as long as I'm keeping it clean and cool, it's not going to do anything in those drawers. So I just consolidate all my colors into balls and stick them in there and then they're ready for the next time I have a project that needs that color. <laughs> Good question. 
So how many minutes do we have? Five more minutes. Okay, so let me show you what we're gonna make next week, just so I don't forget. Um, next week on our Zoom class, and it's our last one, so please join us if you can. Uh, we're gonna make another do-it-yourself home decor project. It's going to be um, these beautiful granite um, coasters. This is uh, Primo Sculpey, and I've used a couple different colors to get this marbled look. And then I also used some gold leaf um, here, and I did seal the gold leaf with Sculpey Glossy Glaze to keep the leaf from tarnishing if it came into contact with a wet glass, which it probably will. And then I glued cork on the back just to make them um, super resilient and super usable. So they're pretty on one side and super functional on the other. So that's next week, Tuesday, August 4th at five. And also if you're encouraged to make something either through this class or by playing the video back later, we would love to see what you've made. Um, absolutely love to see what you've made. And if you post it to social media, please um, tag us with the hashtag Sculpey and also hashtag um, make it with Michaels. And then that way we can follow what you're doing too. And we can be inspired um, by your artwork. So um, if there, we may have a minute or two for one more question. Yep. Um, <laughs> when baking earrings and flat surfaces, do you recommend baking a certain side down? Okay, so good, good question, because let's say um, your, your earring piece is, is going to lay on a shiny pan. Let's say it's glass or metal or even the silicone baking sheet. Um, the polymer oven-baked clay is going to mimic whatever it's touching during the heating process. So if you lay a flat earring piece on um, a glass baking sheet, it's going to pick up the shine of that. And so um, a good way around that is to use, uh, if you don't want it to be shiny on the back, because believe me, it's not gonna be shiny all over. It'll just be shiny where it touches. Uh, a good way to get around that is to bake on any kind of paper. You can put paper right in your oven. It, it'll be safe at 275 Fahrenheit. Um, you can use that as a barrier between your oven baked clay and the baking sheet, and then it won't pick up that shiny spot. However, when it comes out of the oven, you're using, you're protecting your hands and you're getting that out. And then you're setting that piece of clay on something stable and hard, like my Formica countertop or something um, that's not hot because what's gonna happen is when paper cools, it bends. And so if paper is cooling and you've left a flat piece of clay on there, it's gonna bend the clay with it and then you'd have to rebake it. So you just gotta have some workarounds um, like that. But yes, um, so you asked which side do you put down? I would put the side down that's the back so that if there's any shine or any texture picked up, um, that would be occurring on the back of your art piece, not the front. And then what about your necklace? Okay, so isn't this cool? This is from my friend, um, Pan Swan Sila. She is an artist in Thailand and she does this beautiful um, batik type patterning that she does on um, oven baked clays. And I just love her work. It's even wired on the edges with um, some hand wiring that she does. She's a really uh, meticulous artist and a beautiful person. And so I'm proud to have um, this piece that I got from Pan Swan Sila. <laughs> And then one more question. You were talking about how the paper kind of curves. Yes. Can you rebake to flatten it? Or you do sure you have can. To start over? No, you can rebake. And at this point, once the oven baked clay is baked, it will not then pick up the shine of the baking pan. So you don't have to worry about the paper. You can just stick it back in the oven. And once you see it flattening back out, then you'll just want to pull it out and give it the chance to cool down on a very flat, stable surface so that it doesn't curl again. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> so anything else? Um, no, I think we're good. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. I'm Amy Kranick for Sculpey and for Make It With Michaels. And so I hope to see you um, August 4th, a week from today for our final um, Zoom class. I've loved having you and I hope that you can come back for one more. Thanks.